I mean, there are also incredible treasures in there that you'd surely want to get your hands on. I won't stop you from trying, but if you die in there, I'll claim everything you have in your pockets. <laughs> Channeling that Patches type energy, are we? What is Verho? Verho will be a dark fantasy dungeon crawler. The game will take inspiration from Kingsfield and Lunacid. Now, about Lunacid. I went from loving the game to hating it due to its game design choices. The falloff was so extreme that I had to vent my frustrations about that game. But in doing so, one of the developers commented on that video, asking to use some of the ideas that I talked about to improve Lunacid, but for his game. And I was fine with that, but I was curious to see what he was making, so I kept tabs on it ever since. Playing that demo for Verho after many months later, I found myself pleasantly surprised. So let me give you my thoughts on the demo for Verho. Let's talk about that presentation first. Verho wants to go for the low poly aesthetic and I'm all for it. Recently, I played through two other demos, Morta and Hark the Ghoul, that are the same or at least similar genre to Verho, but all of which have a different style. Each area that I explored in Verho looks good so far. The people and monsters look fine too. I think all my issues with the visuals can be found in the first area, like the shortcuts as they look kind of flimsy. At the very least, you can make the doors fully close off the area. You can also restructure the whole thing, but that's up to you. There's also a poison lake that gives off a radiating glow, and while I do know that you've changed the way this looks, I will extend this towards anything else that gives off light. All I can say is maybe tone it down or change how the lighting works. Also, the audio of Verho can be sporadic at times. The sound effects occasionally get too loud, or they don't play at all. The music across the board has been perfect, and I wouldn't change it for anything. And the voice acting, I would say is good. I have a personal favorite in The Merchant. New? Good. All new need a weapon. I can sell. You will buy! However, it's totally possible another character might end up being my favorite later. But I'll have to see when you release the full game. I can still see it improving with the delivery of the lines over time, but the voice actors themselves aren't bad. But seriously, don't hold a grudge. Take this, and let's consider ourselves even. What about the story or writing in Verho? I did find the lore to be interesting, with there being a curse that kills people if you look at their face. People would have to wear a mask to get by if they want to communicate with other people. I don't have any issue about what's shown at the moment about the world, and that includes the characters. As I said, the store merchant is my favorite, but I also like the dude you first talk to. The giant snake you have as a blacksmith is awesome too. I only have a small issue about how this dude is written. I know he's supposed to be inspired by Patches, but I feel like how he says he will take my stuff if I die in the cave, mm, I, I get it, but I personally wish he was less obvious about it. I prefer subtlety. But more importantly, I wish there were less grammar errors. Health endurance? I don't know what that's supposed to mean, man. I, I do know that English is not your first language, so it's completely understandable why these grammar errors are here. As more and more people play your demo, they will probably point out some of these errors and you can fix them. Alternatively, you could get someone that majored in English in college. I mean, it's not like they're doing anything with that degree, so hey, you might be giving them purpose. What about the gameplay of Verho? Let's start with exploration. Of course, with games like these, exploring is very important. This is how you find weapons and items. And I would say I felt pretty rewarded for exploring what I could. It's natural for games like this to have weapons and items that vary in usefulness per character build, but at least I can say with this one, it didn't skew towards one type of build. I'll just say keep up the good work here. And before I talk about my feelings on the gameplay, at least let me describe the combat first. 
So the combat involves holding down the attack button for more damage. Verho does feature a critical hit mechanic where if you let go of the button at the correct moment, you will do 120% more damage. If you have a melee weapon or shield, you can block, and it will also act as a dodge with the backstep. If your character is capable, there is also magic in the game too, but there's no critical hit mechanic here. All magic has a different type of element, and every weapon and spell has a different charge time. And when you defeat enough monsters, you'll be able to level up and place your stat points in whatever stats you want. The basis of the combat system is a lot more satisfying than I thought it would be. I love the idea of the critical strike being linked to your attacks as opposed to RNG. I was happy that I was able to use the game's resin on ranged weapons. For those that don't know what that is, it's an item in Dark Souls that enchants your weapon for a short time. You can't use resin on any of the bows. Instead, you would have to use the arrows with the element that you want. Now, I'm not sure if you will add elemental arrows in Verho, but I guess it could be nice to see. Making an elemental type of archer build sounds neat. Oh, and while we're on the topic of bows, fun fact. The way bows and crossbows work in Verho, I guess came from me. Although vice versa, with the bows being faster and the crossbows being stronger but slower to charge. Not gonna lie, I kinda popped off when I noticed that. Anyway, I enjoyed melee combat using the daggers on my first character, as I used the thrust and backstep to get in and out of danger. The magic swordsman that I made was slightly more annoying because the shield that I was using took a big portion of my screen. Besides that, I thought the build was pretty cool too. Playing mostly melee characters got me to notice how sometimes the animations get stuck, so I can't always go in and out of combat like I want. However, besides that occasional bug, I can really get behind this combat. It's pretty good. If I could add anything to Verho, I would add three things. I would make the Broken Sword something more, add a dark spell somewhere in the early game, and maybe a new ring. Starting from the top, I would make it so that the Broken Sword can be repaired to the sword that the Thief Dude has on his back. It could possibly make for a good one-hand dex weapon. Although I would make sure that the player wouldn't be allowed to do that until mid-game at the least. And while we're still talking about the Broken Sword, I would also make it charge faster. I know that the weapon is supposed to be weak, but I feel like it shouldn't take as long as a full-length sword. I think the charge time being 0.4 seconds would be better even if it's a smaller buff. And then next we have adding a dark spell. I know you have some dark elemental spells planned, so maybe you can place one of those, preferably a low damage one to keep it balanced, somewhere in the early game so people can use the void shard as an offhand weapon. And then lastly, what kind of new ring would I add? I think it would be cool if there was a ring that allows a faster charge for a melee attack if you get a perfect block with a shield. Having a shield equipped makes you do less damage. Not by much, but it's still there. And when I noticed that, I took it off and I stopped using the shield. So this idea popped into my head while trying to figure out what would get me to use the shield again. Maybe the next attack after a successful perfect block could charge 50% faster. However, something like this I know I wouldn't want in the early game because it would be too strong. So maybe placing it in the mid game would be fine. And that's all I'm going to talk about for Verho. I could go on and on about this dungeon crawler, but I'm going to stop myself here. I had a good time with the demo, and I can't wait to see more from the team. So far, you're all doing a good job, so keep it up. I think it's awesome how you're open to feedback, too. Just make sure you don't compromise your vision, alright? If anyone else is interested in playing the demo for Verho, go download it on Steam. But that's it from me. I'll see you in the next one.